Good morning, Jeff Dean here with another upload taken from the new talked about DJI Osmo Pocket. Well this is a very cold January day, especially so on the seafront itself. It's not so bad further inland, my hands are starting to go numb with all the cold. Apart from which it's actually a beautiful sunny day with blue skies, that's just the way I like it. It's extremely windy as you can probably tell by the waves here and there is an area further up where the waves are really high but I really don't want to take that chance with a non-waterproof camera. It does have its own sound and although it's still mono it is a vast improvement from the other larger DJI Osmo. I still like to use it for reference in the sound and adding my own stereo sound from a Zoom recording device. There's only one battery built into the camera which apparently lasts 90 minutes, or roughly for 4K and longer for HD mode. I've been using 4K and I'm not 100% sure, but maybe it is about 90 minutes using the device on its own. But I'm pretty sure that the battery depletes much quicker when attaching the phone app. I don't know if other people have found this as well. Let me know if you have. What I've done is to buy one of these little portable power packs, uh, the ones that they use for phones, and that, pretty, uh, that works pretty well for me. And with that you should be able to film all day. Yes, in order to kick the whole thing off you'll need to download the DJI Mimo app. And one of the first problems that I came across was the attachments. Uh, the attachments with the camera were not compatible with my standard Android devices. Now they have the little micro USB attachment and I either needed to get an iPhone or a newer Android with a USB-C socket. And that's exactly what I did, the one with the C socket. But only because I needed another phone anyway. Well, that's my excuse. Going back to the main problem with the older Androids, I'm assuming that the attachments will soon be available, at least via third party somewhere. Otherwise that's a bit silly, isn't it? This is a competitor to the GoPros out there, but in all fairness, both cameras are very different beasts to each other. One's capable of doing what the other can't. What I like about this, as with my original Osmo, is its stability. Whether you're standing still or panning, 
or there's a lot more of a slight to do now and that's moving with the camera. It has a three axis stabiliser and one mode I prefer to keep it in is with the tilt lock on. Now once you've installed the app you'll find a few basic things that you can do with the camera as a standalone device which is okay if you want to keep it in full auto. However, if you want more control, then it's worth going through the menu with your smartphone attached. And once you attach, the app should be activated. Once activated, you get a much better view on a larger screen because the camera itself does have a tiny screen, which is okay for, really for reference. But on your phone, you'll see plenty of options from different types of camera modes, pan, fast followed, slow follow, and that's the one I prefer. Auto white balance, manual white balance, and several others built in, uh, you know, preset ones as well. Again, I prefer auto white balance on this. It seems to, to, to work pretty well, and everybody else see, seems to say the same as well. You can control the ISO and shutter speeds manually. Also, there'll be many neutral density filters out there that will be available uh, to give you a more cinematic effect if they're not already available. You can decide to have the shutter and ISO in auto, especially for a sunny day. I'll probably set mine too high today because initially I'd set it just below what the auto settings were, but then I didn't quite compensate for all this light, bright sand around. It's not come out too bad though. It'll be interesting taking this to the theme parks in Orlando and see how it does out there. So much more portable. And once I have my initial settings from the phone app, I can then just unattach the two devices and just simply use the little camera on its own. I may decide on occasions to add a zoom recorder, most likely H1 as it's thinner, and so far I've managed to roughly attach the two together, that's what I've been using. Well that's the end of another test using the Pocket Osmo, thanks very much for watching. Do check out my channel for similar uploads, also many of the theme parks and other places I have later on in the year. This is Jeff Dean and I'll see you all very soon on YouTube.